Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome on back to the hardcore Minecraft world, where we are starting out in the lovely throne room here that's really close to my face. Where last episode, we came right next door and built up the brand new kitchen building as well as a barracks that I would love to be able to decorate these completely today. We've got a lot of space on the interiors of them and I am so very excited to do a little bit interior decorating and building in today's episode. Super duper excited for it, but we got a lot of things to handle and tackle first. Like for you, my friends, please be sure to click that like button down below and uh, subscribe. If you're new, subscribe, subscribe. At this point in time, my friends, you've probably noticed that the tools on my hotbar are absolutely tarnished. They are so broken down because I've been working like crazy in the nether on a huge mega project. This project here has been something that I have been working on on streams for quite some time, and I think I've showed it off once or twice over here, but finally, it is complete kind of complete kind of we have our wither skeleton farm all the way over here and the farm itself right up here is at about 30 percent functionality because i'm lacking wither roses and on top of that as you can see there's a lot of terrain that still needs to be mob proofed and or destroyed but if you come all the way down here my friends this farm technically does work. If you're in a single player world, there's a little bit of a cheeky tactic you can do here to make these farms super duper good, is turn the render distance all the way down. And now, because nothing else is loaded in, the only place things can load in is right up there, and we can kill them. Well, I've already acquired one skull, which is amazing, so we've just got two more to go, I believe. Maybe one more, we might have one back at the base. And then, we get more withers and wither roses. But that, my friends, is gonna be a project for another day to be finishing up because we've got a lot of other things going on in this world here that I wanna be doing first. If you'd like to see more on that wither skeleton farm project in real time and everything going on over there, please be sure to drop me a follow over on Twitch. You can find that link down in the description below of the video here. We're doing a lot of live streaming from there and Empire, so I really do appreciate y'all taking the time to check that all out. We could have a new best friend here, my friend. Look at him, he's adorable. Be my friend, you're my friend, oh, I love you. I love you. Oh, we have a new friend over here on Mooshland. I love it. So many friends, isn't that right? I don't know how or why so many cats have started spawning down here, but they have, and we just got a new Siamese cat, I believe. Oh my God, you're adorable. I love you. Hi, welcome to the cave village. It's amazing. More or less fully repaired up over here and ready to move on to the next project, my friends. This one is heavily inspired by somebody who commented on the last episode by the name of Chrono Comet. Thank you so very much for the excellent idea. They are saying that we could create a vineyard for one of our fields out here using the flowering azalea bushes. I'm thinking filling this entire section back here with the vineyard could be super duper cool. So I'm over here doing a little bit of block by block terraforming by growing these guys up, taking my rooted dirt back with me so we could get some more of that and harvesting all of the leaves. That was tree number 10 since we got 10 rooted dirt over here and that brings us up to just about three stacks of flowering of leaves. Time to get grinding. This confuses me so much over here. I've been growing these guys, and I think they're replacing the leaves that I had on the tree over here. I haven't picked up any spruce leaves or birch leaves or oak leaves, and some are definitely missing. I never knew that about azalea leaves, or growing trees in general. They can replace other leaf blocks. Huh. A bit of a change of plans here, as I now have an entire shulker box filled with azalea leaves, pretty much, and we've got enough stacks. What that brings us up to five and a half stacks of flowering azalea. I think we're going to add in a few of the regular azaleas in there, too, so it looks like maybe not all of the fruit is fully grown. It can add some extra life into the vineyard just with a little bit of extra variation. And there we have it, my friends, a sugar box full of leaves for ourselves. And we actually got a very good amount of oak logs back here too, which is gonna be sick. And then now we need to make a bunch of fences. I think we go with the simple and easy route of the spruce fences and that'll be absolutely awesome. And now for my little bit of a plan of how do we turn this into a vineyard? We're gonna go in a straight line right now for this little example here, but it's not really what I wanna do when we're in there eventually, but we've got azalea leaves. We'll add some flowering ones into here as well. And I love doing something like this, just big overgrown fields. And then we come all the way down here and we have another point, which is absolutely amazing. That looks really, really cool. And I like that a lot. But we also have these little guys that can almost serve as little bits of ways of it's touching the ground in between if the vines look like they're growing up. And I think that is absolutely amazing. But we've got to transform this entire area right over here, my friends, into a beautiful vineyard. So it is montage time.
And there it is, my friends. We have the completed flowering azalea vineyard right behind us. I am so in love with how this place has come together. It is absolutely gorgeous walking throughout here. Thank you so very much again for the comment for the idea on this one. I would love to read through the comments and see if we can't take one idea from them every single episode and build it in the next one. So let me know any ideas you all have to expand things inside of this hardcore world here as we're going down in the comments below. Now changing gears here just a little bit and getting a few more of our Minecraft chores out of the way, my friends, I'm thinking it is time that we go and kill another dragon. Because I just noticed over here, we have a bunch of gas tears and we just need to make some end crystals so we can summon her again. And there we go, four end crystals, 100% totally safe, nothing for us to worry about over here. Yep, definitely no risk holding these in our hands right now. And it's all, it's all good. It's all good. We're totally fine. Now where is that pesky end portal? I think it's, I think it's down there. All right, here we are, and in the tribute chest, I'm gonna be leaving one bone meal today to help keep ourselves safe as we are in the end. Don't mind me, everybody, just resummoning your lovely, friendly dragon. Time for the final Minecraft chore of the day. Here we go, my friends, dragon round four. Nice. Come here, you big old dragon. Get down here. Woo, back at the sky, please. There we go. That's a nice portal, but I uh, have some new friends, I guess. Sorry, guys. We're leaving. Oh, no. Oh, torches. Man, I just feel so much better out. Got a little bit of aggression out there, took out the Ender Dragon, got another little bit of stuff checked off the list that we need to be doing in this world, and oh, I feel a million times better. Now, just to use these, because I have a lot of them on hand, we're gonna be moving over to keeping the happy juices of flowing here, my friends, and it is time to do a little bit of decoration work around here. And I want to be starting off with the kitchen. I feel like the kitchen can be something that we can turn into a really, really cool place, or it could be super lackluster. So I wanna spend a lot of time working down here, but we have this small section in the bottom where I'm thinking we have some storage right over in there. And then I was thinking if we could, maybe we go the other way. We can have some storage panels over here with extinguished campfires that you can put uncooked foods on. This is kind of our cold storage area down here. I feel like that could work out really well. This is where all of the food would be prepared for everything going in there. So we probably want to have a lot of workstations and places for people to work and be able to do things. Different ingredients all over the different places and everything like that are going to be very, very important for ourselves. So just laying out a few little lines of nether brick around here, we can start to define a few shapes of where things might be going. I'm thinking two little three wide tables in there so people can kind of bob and weave and everything in between. One thing I find super interesting is actually looking at the layouts of kitchens IRL. Yes, yes, I know, weird thing, weird thing. But look at the layout behind a professional kitchen in a restaurant. It's really interesting how they set things up. So we're trying to tackle that here. So maybe we're gonna have like a cleaning and washing station right over here. We can have a chopping station right here. We have a preparation station right here. We have the cooking station in there. Then we have the plating stations in over here and here and then everything's ready to go outwards and i think that could be super duper cool we've got a lot of really cool stuff going on in here and i need to get rid of that window the detailing shulker monster over here keeps growing my friends but we've got a lot of good progress done down here so far and i am a huge fan of this one right bringing in a few little flower pots all over the place to be like herbs that they're picking off to flavor foods or whatever and maybe even we have some cactus right over there. I don't know why, but it just works in the kitchen, okay? And the last pieces of the nether brick I need to be replacing are these guys right down here where I want to do one of those thingies. And then I've got two smokers here, so maybe they need to do a little cooking in the oven. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. But it's really coming along so far. I'm kind of just getting into the final detailing phases where all of this leather is coming from. Now, signs and item frames are really fun to use together because you can use something like this where we just place the signs down and then you actually put some item frames behind it so it makes it look a little bit more like a shelf than it was previously. So we can use that as a few ways to mix things up around the area and just add in some extra very much needed decoration and just variation to what we have going around. 
I also got a little white banner over here that we can make look like a little bit of a towel or something maybe hanging right down in there. I've decided I want to redo this section under here and make it a little bit more usable for ourselves than just having some extra storage space back here. So taking these guys in and then I think we're going to be doing a spruce stair right in here if I can place it. There we go. Another barrel right in there, and that gives us a little tiny slab right in there where we can have some water in. And then I'm actually going to be moving that tripwire hook right back in here, or if I can find it, right there. So now it looks like we've got a little bit of a sink going on back here, which I think is absolutely awesome. The only place that I still have to tackle is everything down here, which is coming along well. I just need to get a lot of campfires. Of course, for the final touch of a Minecraft kitchen is we need our mandatory cake right over there down in the storeroom now however it's gonna be a little bit of a different story of unbaked goods most likely hanging out down here where we can add in a bunch of campfires and just extinguish them like this that brought over some potatoes some raw goods and everything like that stuff that hasn't been cooked yet and you can just plop them right down here and they'll stay there forever we don't have to fill up every single one of these things we can just have a few of them all over the place having some items sitting on it and it really just makes it look like people were actually living in the area which i love so very much but check that out my friends we've got the little storeroom now and i kind of just threw some moss on the corner over there because because why not we have it we might as well throw something down in here but this is looking so fantastic taking a look at the empty room we started with originally and now taking a look at this finished product over here i am absolutely in love with what we've been able to accomplish with the kitchen here my friends we took a very just bland and boring and open and empty space with a staircase inside of it and turned it into something actually really unique and fun moving on to the next project here is i wanted to step outside and work on our little garden area which is a little too little for me here we are quite a few blocks above where the landscaping cliffs are starting and everything like that so i want to extend this area out a little bit further here and to make things just that much more grand is i want to put a slight bit of a retaining wall going around the entire thing having a bunch of bricks and then having a few polished andesite slabs right on top of it i think it's going to look awesome getting the base curve down in here so it's not a boring flat wall we're going with a little bit of a shape right around here making it up as i go so it's not going to be perfect it is so absolutely simple but i love it the bricks with the polished andesite on top i think is such a cool little wall for ourselves and then on the outside we're going to be ending up with something like this where eventually that train is going to be going all the way around here and probably hiding the bottom two blocks in some place we've got our area in here to build the herb garden and that's going to be absolutely awesome i brought over a bunch of coarse dirt with me and also the rooted dirt that we farmed up today because i feel like adding some of that in here for some pathways could be super cool because we get that so much of a lighter color the only problem right now is i don't know how we're gonna lay out this garden yet first and foremost let's start off with building a trellis for ourselves so we got some dark oak fences and fence gates over there to make that shape work i want to put a small well design in there too so it can look super duper cool so now i do love some glow berries so we're gonna bring those over as well we might put some glow lichen on a wall as some sort of a fungus or something that they're using we have the warp truth so that i think can be really cool too in there now the last one that very much pains me to do this is i want some large drip leaf because i think that could be a really cool thing to just have around the area and unfortunately all of our small drip leaf that we've ever had i believe is right down here i'm sorry small drip leaf it's for the big guy and then i believe we just break yes it's go time my friends i'm thinking first and foremost we put a few lilacs right over here just so we have a little bit of a decoration section and then if we count over so we do that guy and this guy and we can have our carrots in here our beetroots in here and then we extend these down so they're about five blocks long so it's just a little tiny plot of crops and then on top of that i'm thinking we have a walkway running right through here and so we can maybe take these guys, which I want to see. Can I place them on tilled? I can. Oh, that's amazing. So it can be like little crops in here too. Oh no, the tilled stuff turns back to dirt even under it. Oh, I didn't know that. Right here in the center, because I think it'll probably be the only place we can really include it, is let's go ahead and throw in the little well design that I love to use because it's just, it's so perfect for a small space. It's too perfect. It's too perfect to not use. Look at it. Look at it. It's glorious. That's a full water source right there. Oh, it's amazing. Now the trellis I wanted to do, we don't have too much space, so I think it might have to be a skinny guy that's only three blocks wide that hangs out right back in here. 
And perfect. Now inside of here, we can bring a few of our weeping vines in and have these dudes just hanging down and it can look super duper cool. So it looks like we're growing something. Hiding in a little cheeky water source right underneath this pillar, we can do that. And then we can grab a few bits of sugar cane to make it look like they're using some reeds or something. Now, a very important thing for this, in my opinion, is making it look like people are actually able to work in the area. So you need a few little tool stations and whatnot in your garden. It can't just be garden stuff all over the place. So we need to get some lights down here and everything, but even just something a little bit like that, where they have a covered workstation of sorts can be kind of cool. As far as mob proofing goes, it doesn't have to be perfectly lit up because I was planning on adding in some fence gates right there to stop everything, but this is starting to look super duper cool down here. Now I just need to get the final stages in of replacing a lot of the dirt with coarse dirt and rooted dirt around this area, and then maybe some final details. I'll get back with you. This, my friends, is starting to look absolutely fantastic down here. I love this. It's very cramped and very lush, but I think it's working out pretty perfectly. We've added in so many little things all over the place, and I started bringing in some moss so we could still have some green grassy bits, but I want to make it feel like it was raised up off of the ground so it wasn't quite all the way down where you would typically see like the grass blocks and everything, and this way it doesn't spread to our dirt, which I love so very much down here, but this is really coming together so far. I absolutely am in love with this little place we have but with this area finish up down here my friends the upper section right in here where i've been meaning to build a large oak tree is looking very bland and very boring before we move on to decorating the rest of the barracks out i feel like we got to get a big old tree in here i it, it it has to happen it has to happen so good my friends it is time to kick this off in a good old-fashioned time lapse mode and build a big old oak tree I've got to say, my friends, I think this is one of the best trees I have built in a very, very long time. I love how it fills up the area inside of here. This is looking absolutely fantastic, my friends. We got the glowberries hanging down. I was going to do some lanterns originally, and I was like, nah, we got hanging glowberries. Let's do that to get a little bit of light in this area. I'm a tad bit worried about mobs spawning up on top of those oak logs, but we'll just keep an eye on it for a little while. What's one creeper going to do to us? Kill us? Nah, that's just the end of the series. That won't happen, right? Yeah, no, that one. That is another item checked off the list for today, my friends. And next up is I want to tackle at least laying out the barracks inside of here. We've got a lot of stuff to do, like getting floors in and everything like that. But unfortunately, I don't have any resources left, really, that I want to be using on it. I want to be using a lot of dark oak. So across the jungle we go to the dark oak forest. There it is in all of its glory, land that we can absolutely destroy. Perfect. Time to get shopping, my friends. I think I just need a few stacks today because I want to do most of the floors out of stripped dark oak logs. So unfortunately, uh, we need one log per block space. I've chopped and chopped and chopped my way through the entire day here, my friends, and we've done it. We finally got enough dark oak for us to be able to build for quite a while here. Didn't take all that long, but this is an absolutely beautiful hill up here where we have the one mushroom ruling over them all. So we don't have to fully commit to dark oak owning everything going on in here. I'm going to be bringing in a few spruce slabs as well because I think we can get something really cool rocking with those in here too. I think I'm going to be replacing these. So if we do double spruce slab and then we have the dark oak going across like this and then we strip the dark oak down, I think that's going to give us a really cool floor pattern and also a ceiling pattern for the floor below. All right, perfect. There we go. We got the floor in place now, and it's looking really good in here. For now, I'm going to just throw a bunch of torches around so we can get this thing figured out. But what I was thinking is we have these windows right over here that are a little bit lower than I really want them to be for a second floor. But then we have a good amount of space, like if we did a floor right along here for the windows from up above. So what if you create a long staircase going all the way up there that'll eventually meet at the door section right in there. Now, one other thing I wanted to try, but it might make this place a little too small, is making two thick walls going around the entire area so we don't have this messy texture on the inside. So what I was thinking we could do is bringing some sand in here and then we use some smooth sandstone as a bit of a trim right along here. I'm gonna leave this wall bare over there so we have a good amount of space for that staircase to go up. But then from here, I just want to throw sand right back on top. And I think it could be kind of cool as like a textured wallpaper of sort. 
It is a different vibe for sure, but I'm kind of loving it, to be honest. This is looking really good. Okay, new plan, strip birch log at the base. That's, that's a win. Making a bunch more progress over here on the new interior, my friends, and it is looking real, really good. I got another wall section built out in here just to separate things into another room again. We've got the whole second floor in that is actually beehives, and I think it looks so good. I love this as a flooring material. It's kind of a mix between a birch and an oak plank, and I think it's perfect. We got the two chimneys from the top coming down here, so we got one for the second floor right in there, and we got the second one going through the floor down to the first area, and then from here, my friends, I was thinking it was time to make a bunch of bunk beds. I think we're just going to be stretching them all the way across this wall. So we're just going to have two tall beds going everywhere, which over here, maybe uh, skipping that spot right there. And that way we can have a lot of beds up here for what is going to be the barracks area. Just a lot of people just need to sleep in a one small area. That being said, I do want to bring in a bunch of barrels and things so they can have some area to store all of their stuff. And we just got to do this and get a lot and a lot of stuff over here. And I think we need some lanterns and things hailing, hanging down from the ceiling too, because it's a, it's a wee bit dark. Thankfully, our decoration box has pretty much everything we're going to need to be able to create some really cool stuff in here. I'm going to have to go get a little bit more spruce wood, but I'm thinking like a little bookshelf in there. And then we just pick a spot, maybe right in here, and just toss a lantern. Now, I love the look of all of these things in here with the beehives from on top, but I think we need to add some extra detail just to get some more support in here. Something like that with those guys could be super good, just adding some trap doors in. And I think we should do the same exact thing in here. I haven't added any hanging lights in this room yet, but just, it's, I hate flat ceilings. I can't do it. I can't do the flat ones. Okay, I'm kind of loving this. Just a little hidden bookshelf back there where they can do some learning and reading and all that stuff because we want everybody to be educated up here. And then from there, we just need to make a lot of blue beds and I do not have storage space for these. I figured the light blue bed over here could be kind of a fun way to go just to have it kind of be with the colors of the castle. And then from here, we need to get some good light sources from the ceiling. So I figured we could add in a few chains hanging from some hoppers. So it looks like they have an origin point. And I think that's really super duper cool. Not quite sure how effective it is, but it does look real good. I didn't go too insane on detailing this place over here, but I really like it. So we just got a little couch over here with a nice carpet on the ground, two tables in the corners to block some mob spawning spaces. We got this nice little setup. I've been loving adding some of the candles around. It just looks so nice. We got so much stuff in here. The only place I'm a little worried about mob spawning is this main room because, well, now I realize that I don't have light sources in here at all. Maybe we should handle that. Probably a little overkill, but it'll do the trick. I'm absolutely loving this though. The upstairs is pretty much finished up after the last time we did it. Just added a few candles around and got some banners up on the walls, but that is pretty much gonna have to do it for all of our interior work on today's episode. We have done so much on these places. Moving on to the next project for today's episode is gonna be a little bit of a weird one here. As I was over at the Wither Skeleton Farm, just briefly showing it on, off on stream earlier today being Monday, and well, uh, we got three skulls. So stopping by the wizard tower that this is my new entrance apparently, we need to make some potions of poison. In you go, nether wart and spider eye, they're all fermented. Okay, well, I need a spider eye. One spider eye and one gunpowder. We receive three splash potions of poison. Stopping at the wither skeleton farm where we have the skulls for ourselves, five of them to be exact, but we're only using three today. And back in the end where we start Operation Omega. One final wither skeleton skull right in there. We'll summon the wither for ourselves. But what we need to do first is we need to hook up these dispensers on the walls right over here. Adding some fun observers right along here. I'm going to deactivate it for now. And then the sticky piston above. Omega will be 50% operational as soon as we flip that because all of the dispensers are firing. Now to prime Operation Omega. Systems are fully operational. Powering on the right side now, we will see chickens. Is a success, is a success. Bringing side two online, we will see many chickens. Oh my gosh, it's a huge success. Look at that, the beautiful sounds of Operation Omega. There it is, beautiful. <laughs> oh, this works so well. Now we have to either wait for them to grow up or we throw the splash potion of poison. The problem is, is I don't think I can hit all of them with a poison potion. And I don't think I have seeds on me. I might have one of my shelf boxes. Ooh, do they like beetroot seeds? <gasps> this could be a win. This could be a win. Oh, they love them. Throwing the wither skull on now, please. Okay, the wither summon, the wither summon. Throw the potion of poison. 
and the chickens go. Please? There they go. They're gone. They're gone. Oh my gosh. I think it worked, everybody. I think it worked. We are taking some damage, though, from this poison, so I gotta stay all the way back here. <laughs> A stack and 21 more wither roses. I will take that. Operation Omega was an absolute success. What a yoke, my friends. That was so much easier than I thought it would be. With the absolute success of Operation Omega, we are able to come over here to the Wither Skeleton Farm where we can expand this so many times over. Right now we have about three stacks of roses down here and I can come through now and add all of these new ones we got. There we go. I think one or two more rounds of that and we will be completely filled in here, my friends. And oh, no, 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 Gasty Boy. No, we're staying all the way over here. But check this out right here. All we got to do is bring this side out another two blocks. And this guy needs to come out another two-ish blocks as well. We're all the way to the edge over there and probably about the same on that side. But that, my friends, is going to have to do it for today's episode. Thank you all so very much for watching. We were able to accomplish so much today from creating the flowering azalea vineyard over there, which I absolutely love so very much. It's so much cooler than I ever could have imagined to moving on to developing the entire kitchen area and everything like that. It's just looking so good inside of there. We've got the beautiful tree. We've got the amazing little area outside for us to walk around in as we need to. And then I was honestly so surprised by the success of Operation. Omega. I was not expecting to get that many wither skeleton or wither roses out of that thing, but you know what? We did it. We made it happen, and that is absolutely amazing, and not even to mention the amazing barracks build that we did it too here. So, you know, today was a jam-packed episode. If you did enjoy, please be sure to click that like button down below. My friends, sorry if there's any weird audio issues towards the front of this video. I just got a new audio setup, and I'm kind of tweaking it and learning it as we go. So, the next few videos, I'll get that really nailed in here. So, any feedback you have, please be sure to let me know down in the comments below, and any ideas for you have builds for next episode please be sure to let me know that down there as well but leave a like if you did enjoy subscribe if you're brand new with that my friends i will catch you on the flip side